Kanji and last exercise, two really basic drills, really important, and it's very easy for us to sort of go through the go through the moves, go through the motions, but we need to kind of realise why we were doing this. And, and it's nice to kind of know how it came about and little things that, that we, we try to um, top tips, I guess, or bullet points, that kind of thing. Uh, for you. Yeah. Um, just to sort of explain a little bit of how Dan Chi kind of came about, the purpose of, of Dan Chi. Just to, to start with, if he, if he comes in with a punch, we can use uh, what we call jump sound. Jump sound means sinking or sunken elbow. Um, now I'm not kind of going straight across with this, I'm kind of taking it on a, because um, for those that know, uh, do you like the bird moving, I think, of um, side? Do you know the difference between a high gown and a jump? One's higher than the other. No. So I'll show you uh, two high gowns, here, again, high gown, two jumps, here, again, here. It's pretty much identical, doesn't it? Mm -hmm. And so jumps out means sinking or sunken elbow, meaning that it can either be dropping from a higher position this way, or it can be in a sort of deflectory kind of manner, really. The high gown, the reason why we sort of distinguish one between the other kind of went straight across. The difference with the jumps out is that on contact there was a slight angle to it which made him, rather than me dropping onto it, it made it ricochet down from me. So that's kind of like that, that subtle difference. But regardless, anyway, if you just give a, a, a straight punch through, so boom, just push through, yeah, just gives a, a good boom, a good whack. So yeah, he's pushing through, so I know he's pushing through on this. And then if I turn, it's very easy to get that deflection, so this is easy. So that's the first rule of, of, of that jump out. But if he lifts up from here, straight up, it's actually really, really weak. So that, that shape is weak on an upward. Do you want to try it? Yeah. I'll give you a go. So, if you, um... Can you chew instead? So if, if, uh, if a punch comes in... Yeah, just, you know, so, yeah, you go for it. That's fine. So, when he comes in with a punch, that's great to stay there though, when you block. Um, if you want to use an arm turn so you can see it better this way. So, you go for the punch here and a deflect. So, that's very easy. If you can lift upwards from there, lift. And you see how he's just lifting me up. Easy. So, again, he gives a whack. <coughs> here. As he lifts up now, if I change that shape, that's weird, isn't it? <laughs> So what he's doing there, because I've changed the shape, it's like he's trying to lift my entire nine and a half stone straight, straight <laughs> up the <laughs> way. This <laughs> maybe if you want. So he comes in. So this is what's happening here. He comes in with a punch, and I get this shape, this deflection. That angle is is strong laterally, but it's weak um, upwards vertically. If I change my shape here. Then what he's doing now is he's lifting a bit more if he can. And that's kind of what's happening. It's almost like he's just lifting my weight. <coughs> so we changed. Thank you very much. Lovely. So the usual again. What we've got when he came in with the first punch, and I block, we can change this shape from the punch and the, the jump to the tan and the fox out. That lift when he lifted me up, we're going to change to the palm strike because for him to do a palm strike. His hand goes forwards and his elbow lifts up. So we get this kind of vertical, this raising. And as he's raising with this, I'm then going to press down. Now, there's a couple of things that I want to, to kind of mention with this, because you're all doing this fairly well. In fact, you're doing it very well. There's one thing that you're doing, and it's, and it's when he goes for the palm, you kind of, there's several of you, allowing yourself to draw this in. And that's going the same line as this attack. Which means, if you can, if anyone's kind of on that half or on this half, if you want to sort of look at something on the other side as a, as a kind of reference point for where my wrist is, in fact, I should use somebody else for it. Well, it doesn't matter. But the point is that because his hand is going forwards, it's going to feel like I'm pushing down against that. Because his elbow, um, <coughs> because his hand is going forwards on the palm, it's going to feel like I'm going forwards with my hand. Because his elbow is lifting up, it's going to feel my elbow is pressing down. So in order for me to maintain that same position, it's going to feel, push please strong, like I'm, I'm pressing forwards and down. Suddenly let go, and I'm not doing anything. 
So sometimes this can feel incredibly strong. Wow, it's so powerful, so strong, and it's not. If I press gently on that wall, it feels gentle. If I push strong against that wall, it feels strong and powerful. So he's only kind of getting back what he's putting on this. So for this shape here, if he just went forwards, it would lift that easily. That's fine. But when I alter the shape, by keeping that kind of rigidity, that little bit of rigidity on the wrist, it momentarily kind of creates a little bit like a circuit board, which means that now, um, do, 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 can you just do a jump? Can you just do this shape? If you want. Excellent. So if I was to lift here, and you try and resist, so strong, don't let me lift. You couldn't do it, it's not possible. But if I did it here, and you just basically just rest, so just slump your shoulder into that, and then all of a sudden he just becomes incredibly, incredibly strong because he's become a dead weight. So momentarily what I'm trying to do here is use that wrist shape <coughs> to make this connected with this. So I become like that dead weight. Move away, and you see I'm not, I'm not kind of pressing down. Sometimes in order for me to keep the same position, it will feel like I'm pushing forward. It will feel like I'm pressing down. I'm not. If it doesn't feel like I'm pushing or pressing down, slowly please, then I'm probably coming in with the same direction as the palm. So I'm not actually going to defend it. He pushes forwards, I maintain, and we get that, that, that simple structure. So when we're doing down cheek, try and think about keeping that same wrist position. Allow the elbow to lift out a little bit. Allow that little bit of forward momentum on, on, on the wrist, and that'll give you that connection. And for those, of course, that know Sue and Tower, it's the same feeling. When we're moving out to here, we'll change. It's that little press on the end, that same pressure. Because it was in, elbow moves out to allow for this. We don't resist, we don't encourage, we just allow. And it allows a little press of the wrist, and that's the same feel. So, that's your down sheet. We'll partner up again. We'll just have two minutes on down sheet, and then we're going to give you something on, on laps out, and then we can put this to bed for now. Thanks for listening, guys. Uh, grab a new partner, down sheet side. Where you go.